Thanks for staying with us on the conversation. On the first half, we dealt with the Kenya elections where the Deputy President William Ruto has been declared the President of Kenya following the August 9 presidential elections by the IEBC chairperson Wafula Chepukati. Now we switch over to Angola, where Angola has entered the final stretch of the electoral campaign in the upcoming general elections on the 24th of August. The outgoing president, Jao Lorenzo, of the Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola, MPLA, a party that has been in power for 47 years, is seeking to renew his first term. His main opponent is Adalberto da Costa Jr., head of the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola Unita Party. A total of eight candidates are seeking the country's top job. To many Angolans, this election is a defining moment for them that will shape the history of the southwestern African country. This year's elections for parliament and president are expected to be the most competitive in Angola's post-independence history. However, the results are not expected to usher in that much actual change to the country's political situation. Now, joining us uh, live from Angola to discuss this, we have Osvaldo Zhao, a local government and public policies analyst, joins us from the Angolan capital, Luanda. We also have Claudio Silva, political analyst, he joins uh, from Luanda, and uh, we have Zenaida Machado Ezenteje, a senior researcher at Human Rights Watch. He joins in from the Mozambican capital, Maputo. I would like to start with Zenaida. What's the general mood like in Angola as we inch towards the general and parliamentary elections? And why is this election very important to Angolans? Good evening and thank you very much for inviting me. I think it's difficult for me from Maputo to, to, <laughs> to assess the general mood of the elections in Angola. Uh, I think Claudio and, and the other finalists are better positioned to do that. Um, as for your second question on on um, on what is at stake, I think what is at stake is 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 the fact that the Angolan citizens are going to use the ballot paper to um, evaluate the the past uh, five years of Juan Lorenz. Um, Juan Lorenz came to power on a ticket that he would change what was wrong. Uh, with the previous government that stayed for about 40 years in power. And uh, after five years, there's still a lot to be done in Angola. And uh, the question at this stage is whether the Angolans themselves will have the patience to give him, to wait for another five mm -hmm. years and mm -hmm. see if he can actually deliver on his promises, or they think that they have had enough of him and the ruling MPLA and they will use the ballot paper to chase him out and give somebody else the opportunity to deliver on the promise of things that Angolans themselves have been waiting forever. Okay, I'll, I'll bring Osvaldo into this now. Now, Angola, just like Kenya, is traditionally being a two-horse race. Are we likely to see the same continue? And what do the Angolans expect from these elections? It's okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, and thank you for this opportunity once again. Well, uh, what Angolans can expect from this um for this coming election? Well, um, the process of this uh, coming election has been clear. Like, uh, we're facing uh, all the stages of this election, and until today, we have some complaints from other political parties, but as usual, we look at that as something simple. But we as citizens, so we look at this election with the hope that uh, possibly it's gonna happen in a very peaceful way, and this is what all, we, all, all of us, I mean, uh, intend to. And um, we also, according to the political measure that um, the political party who is, I mean, all the political party who is presenting in the table, we can see that there is a, a, a great changes on the way they think on what they want to bring on the next election. I mean, either which political side is going to win. All of them, they have a very nice, I mean, a common sense of what the youth, I mean, needs. And we believe that um, everything is in place and we feel like we on a, on a good way. Thank you. Now, Claudio, J-Lo, um, talking about Jao Lorenzo here, as is known by supporters, had promised supporters uh, to usher in a new era for Angola. In the last elections, he won 61% of the vote in 2017. What's your assessment of President Jao Lorenzo's five years in office? And it's also important to know that the Russia-Ukraine crisis happened 
uh, during his term in office and also uh, the COVID-19 and its resultant disruptions. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you all for, for inviting me to this panel. I think that there was widespread um, there was uh, there was widespread anticipation for how Jean-Paul Lones was going to govern Angola for the duration of his mandate, because it marked a definitive break from uh, nearly 40 years of Jose Eduardo dos Santos' rule. So, for many of us, it's the first time that we saw a different political leader than Jose Eduardo dos Santos in our lifetime, and the first months of Juan Lorenzo's presidency uh, were met with a lot of acclaim because he promised and started to deliver a fight against corruption because he ushered in a new era of political freedom, uh, of, of, uh, of press freedom as well. And there was a palpable sense that we were a bit freer to, to, to speak politically amongst ourselves. There was a decrease in the perception of fear in, in the country. Unfortunately, however, this was short-lived. And then when the economic crisis started to deepen uh, with the onset of COVID and with the rising popularity of other political parties, uh, society at large began to turn on Jose, on, uh, on Juan Lorenzo. And that's where we find ourselves now. Juan Lorenzo was unable to effectively divorce himself from uh, his party's own autocratic and undemocratic tendencies. He reverted back to Empala's uh, historical form. He began to, to go back on many of his promises as he was campaigning five years ago and as he first took, when he first took power. And perhaps one of the biggest examples of that is that our, our levels of press freedom have regressed um, to, to back to Dos Santos days. So there are systematic violations of of the electoral law, for example, and the rising popularity of Adalberto Costa Jr., which is his main political opponent, has obfuscated uh, the original optimism that was felt here in Rwanda um, when, when Juan Lorenzo first took power. So he had the opportunity to continue to deliver various reforms, be it economic or, or political, but the strength of his, of his own party and their, their inability to confront a loss of power has made him regress to, to, to pre-election levels. Okay, um, Zenaida, I'll move over to you now. Now, he talked about autocratic tendencies of the president, uh, Jean Laurentiu. Now, what would you say about this? And uh, as against the unitist charismatic leader, Alberto Costa Jr., what do you think he has uh, above uh, Jean Laurentiu? One of the, 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 the upper end... Um, benefits of uh, of um, the, the UNITA candidate is that uh, Adalbert Costa Jr. is that he he has been able to spread a message that goes uh, on the same directions of most of the youth in Angola. Um, he has made uh, uh, he has started a conversation about uh, the, the 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 lack of deliverance from the side of the ruling party, um, MPLA, he has been able to draw attention from a lot of the youth that have been discontent with the policies that have been adopted by the current government, uh, the youth that face the daily uh, consequences of being unemployed and uh, of the fact that uh, there are no jobs available in Angola. And uh, the other point that is on his benefit is the fact that he has... Uh, been able to bring the opposition together for the first time in Angola. So it's a movement that we have never seen before. And does uh, most people saying that this is a tight race. Uh, for the first time, the ruling party, MPLA, is going to a relation in a situation where it cannot divide to rule again. It mm -hmm. has to strengthen itself. It has to uh, change the message. It has to start delivering on its promises. And it has to renew itself. And above all, it has to introduce serious reformers if it wants to win. And if it wins, I mean, we ourselves have prepared for them a list of uh, uh, to-do list uh, of things that they need to do urgently if they really want to to recover uh, the, the sympathy of the youth in Angola. So I, I, that is, in my opinion, the okay. advantage of the opposition candidate. He has been able to communicate with the youth better. 
mm. and uh, he's, he's driving the, the crowds. Uh, he, the youth li- like him. Um, is is seen as a most more more honest person and truly person. Of course, he has the benefit of never been in power before, so he, he, he people have to trust on what he says. He doesn't have a track record to be uh, uh, used against him against okay. John Lorenzo, for example, who has been a president for five years under very difficult circumstances and economic crisis, and therefore he has paid for not. Uh, being able f- to deliver on what he, he had promised the Angolan mm. people before uh, he got elected. He was also defense minister under uh, former president, um, uh, under the former president, Edward De Santos. Edward uh, De Santos. Uh, now, let me bring in uh, Osvaldo. The first time Angola held multi party elections was in 1992. The contestation of the electoral results was so great that it led to a return to civil war not until Jonas Zabimbi was killed. Three other general elections, 2008, 2012, 2017, were also described as fraudulent by opposition and independent observers. Angola goes to the polls next week, Wednesday. How prepared is the Angolan National Electoral Commission for the elections? And are you confident they would act independently and not partisan as we wrap things up? Uh, you need to unmute your mic, please. Yeah. Osvaldo. I mean, yes, yeah, I said, um, this is a very difficult question to ask, but um, I'm going to be uh, answer this question in a very professional way in order to just uh, give a, a, a better sense of who is listening to us in order for them to understand clearly what exactly is going on. Well, we're talking about different phases. As uh, Mr. John Ali said, the man in the past, um, we saw that um, we've done what we could, but we were not under I mean, position of different devices. I'm talking about the technology system of Angola has been improved. And the way we see elections, especially talking about the youth, how the youth looks at elections and the different candidates that we have that are running, I mean, competing for the election of this uh, coming week. Well, it's important to say that we have seen changes, I mean, very deep changes comparing to the past elections and the one that is about to come. Uh, for the fact that we, uh, uh, as the citizens of Angola, we are yeah. more aware of what exactly means uh, election and how we are prepared to respond to such situations like that. Well, I believe that um, uh, this new, uh, uh, this coming election, we, we are, I mean, prepared Okay. To expect to expect better, I mean, I mean, better changes, and we believe that um, it's going to be better than the ones that were happening before. All right, thank you so much, Osvaldo. I'd like to bring in Silva to this. Do you believe in it, and what are Angolans expecting from this new, from this election? I think for the first time, there is a real perception that it is possible for the opposition to win. Uh, about seventy-three percent of Angolans are under the age of thirty. Um, and the majority of them have never had experience with civil war. Until this day, that is the main message, or one of the main messages of the ruling party. It's, it's to instill that fear and constantly bring up uh, the horrors of, of a civil war that the majority of its own citizens in the electoral rolls have not seen and have no experience with. So uh, f- for many of us, it's the first time that we're going into an election where the, the, uh, the opposition parties are pretty much on equal footing when it comes to the perception that they have within the general public. Uh, the MPLA continues to, to use all state media and all state resources in its favor, mm-hmm. but the prevalence of social media and the prevalence uh, of an alternative message in said media is at levels that we have not seen before. Uh, I've been alive for the, for the uh, 92 elections, 2008 elections, 12 and 2017. Obviously the last three are the ones that most resonate with me. But as I walk through the streets, as I travel the country, I've just n- never seen this level of engagement from, from ordinary Angolans from all walks of life, but especially as Zenaida has mentioned, and Osvaldo as well, especially amongst the, the Angolan youth that are in fact the, the vast majority here uh, in Angola. All right, thank you so much, Claude. A lot of expectations coming from Angolans. Uh, thank you also, Osvaldo Jal, uh, local government and public policies analyst. We also thank uh, Zenaida Machado for joining us on this conversation. And we do hope for the best in the Angolan elections come August 24. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Okay, this is where we draw the curtains on the conversation for today. The election results have finally been announced in Kenya and Deputy President William Ruto becomes president-elect and we just concluded our conversation on the upcoming elections in Angola and Bengal Thanks for being a part of the program. And I'm Rita Omodia. See you again on Wednesday.